Sir. So, would you just introduce yourself? Yeah. yeah. I'm Vinay. Uh, I'm uh, originally from Mumbai. I uh, grew up for the greater part of my life over there. And um, uh, I'm an engineer by educational background. And uh, I now work as a management consultant in the Boston area primary. So we just want uh, we just want to explore here, uh, you know, your how how you move from India to the U.S. and how it changed your life and your thinking and your perspective, things things like that. So at uh, so if I may start asking you, uh, at what point in your life uh, did you decide to come to the U.S. Um, it was uh, two years after I had graduated from uh, engineering school in Mumbai and uh, primarily uh, after studying I had worked for a couple of years uh, as a software engineer. I was really not interested in that profession. Uh, I, I wasn't too satisfied uh, with uh, my uh, learning at that point of time and I just wanted to do something different. Uh, at that particular point of time I wasn't particularly interested in anything. Uh, just the opportunity to come to a new country and uh, explore a little bit more uh, was one of the motivations for me to come over here. So why, uh, why was it US and not let's say some other, why not UK? I mean being in, in part of India and uh, you know, being from an upper middle class house, I, like you generally jump into the bandwagon, <laughs> and I was uh, sort of speaking jumping into the bandwagon of uh, the exodus of students that happens to the U.S. primarily. Uh, U.S. is perceived as a place of opportunity and. Uh, somewhere where you can uh, establish a firm economic base. Uh, the other piece was, uh, you know, uh, my then girlfriend and now wife uh, actually moved over here before me to study. And that was another one of the motivations for me to uh, actually move to the United States. And uh, just to, uh, you know, digress a little bit, and if you would, uh, if you could shed some light on what may her, um, sure. perhaps not so personal uh, that you might not know, but you know, kind of reading the circumstances of she was in a particular field that was good in the U.S. universities or anything like that. You can share with us. Sure. So, so she happened to be a little bit more fortunate in that she knew what she was interested in at that point of time. So uh, she is uh, much more of a geek or technocrat than I am, and. Uh, she was interested in the field of electrical and computer engineering. And uh, she thought at that point of time that facilities in this country are uh, a lot better than what they are in India. And uh, uh, she got an admit from Carnegie Mellon, and, uh, uh, which was a great school. And uh, she just thought of it as a great opportunity. And she was always interested in uh, doing something like that. And so she took the opportunity to come over here and pursue her masters. And so when you came to the US, did you feel at home? Or what were the things that did or did not make you feel at home? So when I came to the US immediately, uh, I was actually fortunate enough that a few of my friends were uh, in the US already. Uh, so I had a head start of sorts because like, they gave me all the knowledge that they could impart in terms of new immigrants to uh, this country, so uh, a lot of uh, you know tips and things on how I should survive over here, so to speak, were already read, handed over to me. Uh, but at the same time, you know, it's always new. Uh, I remember my first few months in college in Cornell, in Cobb State, New York, where uh, like looking for an apartment, uh, the immediate dollar to rupee uh, purchasing capabilities and thinking, oh, I have to spend a dollar on a drink, uh, and it's, you know, like 40 rupees, it hits you uh, a great deal when you immediately come from India. Uh, I would definitely not say I immediately felt at home, but slowly I got accustomed to 
the ways in this country, whether it's doing your own laundry and things like that, again, yeah, some households in India are not used to that. Really. But what about the, uh, did you have, have difficulty adjusting to some of the cultural issues that were different from India or was it not so different? Yeah, I would say it's different but I would say my transition was smooth primarily because I think growing up I have, uh, whether it's through movies or through some interactions I've uh, kept in touch so to speak with a little bit of the West so it wasn't that difficult to adjust. I mean a few days here and there it took in terms of adjusting and understanding you know I shouldn't ask someone like how much his house costed him to buy, things like that. Like, if you normally, uh, in India, it's a little bit different. So those things I learned as I got over here, but uh, by and large it was okay. I mean, the transition wasn't bad. But it is, no, it is one thing to know that you should not ask. And there is another thing of feeling when you cannot ask something. So, did you experience any of that or were you, that was not a big um, shock to you? I would say it wasn't a big shock as such but you know small things like, uh, you know, in India I think expressing certain things is a lot more subtle over here in the US it's a little bit louder in terms of, uh, you know, you are expected when, uh, when you go to when someone tells you something to say small phrases like I appreciate it or uh, thank you you know for something smiling uh, smiling at a stranger all those things are kind of expected so you know it's a little bit louder over here I would say and it's more demanding of you in terms of how you're supposed to and how did you feel throughout, like, the, how, now how long have you stayed here? I have stayed in the U.S. This is my fifth year. So all through, this fifth, yeah, all through these five years, how did your feeling of India or, uh, you know, there is obviously a longing for India, good or bad. Uh, how did that feeling change over these five years? So or did it change at all? To begin with? It definitely changed sort of an uh, inverted bell curve, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, like Initially there was a very deep longing of you know, uh, wanting to move back and uh, missing uh, home, so to speak. Uh, and then gradually with time it, it uh, reduced and uh, I started feel, finding this to be more of home. Uh, and now actually like it started uh, my, my, my feelings have started, I think, increasing again in terms of the desire to go back home. So, so what is it, can you, if you would like to focus on, what are the few things that pull you back? Uh, so, you know, what are the feelings? Not, not the exact things, but what are the feelings, what you feel and in, in the middle of a uh, you know, a period of time when you're not feeling well and you were feeling like, wish I was home. What is it? What are the small things? What are the feelings that want to pull you back there? I think initially, initially when my feelings of longing were there, they were a little bit more personal in terms of like, what is in it for me back home? Right now, I feel, uh, I mean, however it feels, I, I feel sort of a social obligation to go back. Uh, and in a sense, I am very grateful to this country in terms of broadening some of that horizon because uh, I would say like I led a very sheltered life in India and although I could see a lot of things around me, they were pretty transparent and I used to see right through them. Uh, so uh, I feel uh, there is a lot more uh, awareness now and uh, sort of the longing is slightly different now, uh, at least over the last two years or so. It's more around, uh, you know, uh, there is uh, more that we can contribute in terms of our people and learn from our people themselves, uh, which uh, it definitely comes from the sense of belonging to that place. And now that you know it, it hits you a little harder. Okay, so maybe the last closing question we can have is 
how can you trace for us your the trajectory of your mind of thinking about home the thought what home means has that changed over the period of uh, let's say last 10 years for you has it evolved a new meaning for you what does home mean to you i would say by and large uh, definitely it's changed and uh, i wouldn't say it's changed drastically but there's been quite a lot of change in terms of uh, initially home was uh, again very personal thing where my mom and dad and everyone are uh, um, that seemed like home for me uh, gradually it's changed and uh, you know initially when i moved from mumbai to bangalore i didn't find bangalore to be a home for me at all during the nine months that i was there i was pretty miserable <laughs> I just had the desire to move out and I wanted to go back to Mumbai by hook or crook. Uh, so it, it, that feeling now has changed over the course because now I feel it's generally where loved ones are and uh, not necessarily my parents or uh, for that matter like my siblings or even my wife. It's just where there's like certain friends and uh, where I feel uh, like my sense of belonging is and things like that. that has not changed from india i definitely don't feel 100% like boston is my home so uh, that's not changed but generally i would classify home to be in a more broader sense where my loved ones are and where my affection lies and what is that for you i would say like immediately my wife comes to my mind uh, and uh, next i would say like a larger society and uh, things where i like i can contribute a little bit uh is where my sense of affection lies would that be mumbai possibly but uh, you know uh, again uh, like i also felt a sense of alienation in mumbai when i went recently uh i felt like at least my friends from back in engineering had moved on in a slightly different trajectory than where i have moved as a person and uh, i don't necessarily know if mumbai is home anymore i still think i have to look for home thank you i'm recording now all right so welcome somnath so um, so can you tell us a little bit just to start this off about when and how you moved from india to the us so i was uh, i did my engineering and then worked for about 5 years in india and um, then i gave my gre and came to the us to do my masters okay and and when was this this was in 95 okay yeah. and um so wh- where did you go to study i came to ohio in toledo university of toledo uh, then by <coughs> did my masters and then moved to connecticut to work for this company telecommunication company where i worked uh, for a few years about uh, 3 years and then with the same company i moved to boston and uh, in total i worked for 11 years for this company okay and um, so north ohio is a pretty cold place yes what uh, and you're coming from calcutta so what was that experience like yeah i was um, although i was coming from calcutta but i was raised in many different places in india uh, including mostly the himalayas so cold cold wasn't uh, an so much of an issue cold or snow was not the issue but i think it was the coldness of uh, uh, personal interactions which was an issue more than the coldness of the weather yeah so can you give us an example uh, what kind of uh, when you say coldness of interaction it's just that uh, you know the the personal interactions with uh, with uh, with the people here was not as uh, warm for me and uh, you know the distance between people i found was a lot more the the emotional or psychological distance and uh, it was difficult to get close to people and form strong human bonds it it would take a long time and you could do that with very few people so that is what i mean by the coldness as to uh, relative to how interactions are in india 
So did you miss that about India? Yes, uh, very deeply and uh, surprisingly or not surprisingly I still have that feeling which has uh, stayed with me ever since the very beginning of um, this coldness and um, the lesser, lesser, um, lesser layers between people. And not necessarily it's always pleasant but that's how it is. There are fewer layers between people and it's easier to get closer to people and knowing them and being with them. And, and so you were a student for, for, for some time um, and uh, what was that transition like? Because it's a different experience being a student and then working here. Um, did things smoothen out over time? Were you getting more used to things? Uh, in the US means? Yes, yes, uh, certainly. There was more getting used to, uh, uh, as you can say, getting normalized. And, you know, coming slowly more and more uh, in that uh, plus minus three sigma of where you are defined to be normal. And, you know, you start doing more in things that everyone is supposed to do and uh, feel happy about certain things that everyone is feeling happy about. So you, there is an internal uh, pressure to normalize yourself and I was also going that route. So, so give us an example of that, things that people do to normalize themselves. Uh, you know, like uh, mm, dressing the, the ways you are uh, supposed to dress and, uh, you know, not doing the unacceptable things like having your shirt out, let's say, a very simple example of, um, you know, dressing or, you know, eating or wishing and you know being excited about certain things uh, that you don't find really to be exciting you know uh, maybe football game i don't know something like that uh, me making big deal of things that you probably don't want to make big deal out of and not making big deal of things that you are supposed to be making big, big deal of like, um, you know if someone oh, one example was um, you know, if someone doesn't show up at work, doesn't come to work, you're also friends with this person and you're calling, you're a little worried, like why hasn't this person shown up? And then, uh, then the, what you read from around is you're not supposed to be doing that. I mean, it's just a co-worker and you don't get so personal and you know, why are you so worried about he's a big boy, he can take care of himself. So these are things that you're not supposed to do but I felt like doing and then you know got this reaction. So these were the adjustments and then the next time around you don't do it so you get a little more normalized. And so that that, that way and uh, one distinct uh, experience I had when I first came was in Toledo. I went, I was looking for work on campus and I went and asked this, um, I went to this woman looking for work and then she said so how are you doing today and that warmed me up very much because I thought you know she's so specific she she's not generally asking me how I am but uh, you know how I am today specifically and as if the follow-up thing was if you are not okay today then I can do something about it but uh, then you know I went out and gave her the whole thing how I was doing today and it didn't matter and it was not really expected so then, you know, you learn these things and then you get more and more uh, normalized. And then your aspirations also get normalized. What are you supposed to aspire for after this and after this? So that, that's what I mean by getting normalized. All right, so, All right, so, so Somnath, you've talked about your experience of coming to the US and what you experienced first up mm -hmm. um, and uh, the, <clears throat> the, the lack of closeness and so on. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about uh, what came after, right? So you married, you had a daughter and so on. Uh, over the years, uh, and, you know, and especially when you got into family life, um, how did that relationship to India change? Or, or did it change? Um, yeah, it did change, but it wasn't because of the family life. But it was uh, perhaps more because of uh, one, because I was staying away from India. This was the first time I 
first time, first time I left India was for the US. So being away from India itself gives you a very different perspective of things. You know, even actually I remember as the plane took off took off from uh, Bombay, uh, it was a different. Uh, it's a very different feeling of you know that I'm leaving India. Um, and a large part of uh, the change was also because of aid and uh, you know my my interaction or my being part of aid also exposed me to uh, to the larger india that i was uh, you know more or less unaware of so that that has really changed my relationship uh, to india and uh, india is no more you know it's neither just my family uh, like my parents and my friends and that is India, no, that is not it and nor is it a big abstract idea of what India is, you know so the meaning of India has changed a lot for me uh, I, you know, I am more connected to the people specifically uh, the poor, the marginalized people of India so that gives a very different so that is how my uh, interaction or my uh, perspective of India has changed. And, and how does it feel now when you go back and visit firstly your friends and family and then go out and meet other people, people you may not have interacted so much with in the past before coming to the US? Yeah. So there are many things. Uh, one, uh, at a very personal level, going back to India means uh, um, all my senses of you know, hearing, say, touch, feel, smell, everything gets engaged in a much more deeper and uh, wider way. Like diverse sounds, diverse scenes, diverse colors, uh, diverse um, feelings, temperatures, all of these. Like, so so you're, it's immediately your senses get it engaged in many different ways in a deeper uh, and gives you much more deeper experiential uh, feeling at a, at a little wider level with friends and family you seem to have you know develop more uh, differences of perspective of what India is and where India is going where India should be going and all of that so that sometimes creates a little bit of alienation with uh, with the people that you have grown up with you know your uh, friends and, and family and then there is the, um, in, in the larger perspective with the people. And uh, so that is a very empowering feeling that there is a lot of hope, that there is a lot of diversity, uh, that there is a lot of resilience. And so that gives you a very hopeful, uh, hopeful and energetic feel for the future. And uh, for me personally, a lot of meaning in my life to engage with all of this and you know be part of uh, working for a better and just world. I think let's start with that. Right. So, so somehow then I think the last question um, that that we have is that so you've talked about home about India. Um, so w what does home now mean for you after all these years and all these varied experiences? Yeah, home, home has been uh, a shifting experience. Home has been a, 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 um, an ever elusive concept of what home really means. And, and that has never settled in, in, in one physical locality to say the least. And, and the idea of what home is has been evolving and evolving. So on certain days, you know, let's say in the cold of Boston, I'm walking for a long time or I'm outside for a long time and uh, I walk right home and I open the door and I go, go in and with the warmth and, you know, the sounds of the family and all and your uh, heart and mind really feels this is home. And, but then at other times, you know, you are thinking of India, you are thinking of maybe I, I am thinking specifically to say I am, I am thinking of my home in India, the sound and smells of it and uh, or, or sometimes you know and that, 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 that feels home and then yet another uh, other times I you know I think of let's say the Sundarbans and you know 
uh, you know, sitting there with uh, 50 people and talking about things or just sitting in, in a village house and, you know, sharing a meal with uh, people there or, you know, holding the hand of a little child, then that also feels home. So, so what feels home is uh, right now very elusive to me and but it, it has definitely grown in what home means from you know a house to a bigger place to a bigger place to almost enclosing a lot of physical space uh, and and yet it's not all of none no one place is an entire gives you the entire feeling of